Hi there, I'm Sabermetrics, and welcome to the short video tutorial series on how to play Cardfight Vanguard. This series is aimed towards those who have never played the Cardfight Vanguard trading card game before, or don't quite understand how it works. I hope these guys help you understand the basics and mechanics of this card game. But before we dive right into it, let's take a look at the background and origins of how the card game came about. Cardfight Vanguard, like many other trading card games such as Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon started out in the form of Japanese media. With Vanguard, an anime television series was the basis of a franchise, which started in 2011 and quickly grew in popularity. The official trading card game quickly followed, only a month after the anime's release in Japan. Subsequent releases by the card game company Bushi Road in Singapore and the rest of the world that same year caused interest in the game to increase greatly. So much so that within a year and a half of its worldwide release, regional, national, and world championships were held within an overwhelming amount of people attending each qualifying stage. Currently, the popularity is still ever increasing, as ongoing official tournaments such as the Team League and stand-up qualifiers add a new dynamic to how the game is played. The game has currently released a number of products, including trial decks and extra booster sets, and is currently progressing into the 12th booster set of the series in Japan. However, the English release at this moment of recording has only reached booster set 7, with 8 just around the corner. To catch up, English sets have been releasing on a near monthly basis, so drawing level with Japanese releases is well within reach. So with that short introduction out of the way, let's move on to today's episode, the cards themselves. If you haven't seen a Cardfight Vanguard card before, Almost all of them will look very similar to something like this. All Vanguard cards have a full art style design, separating it from many of the other popular trading card games. Let's start off with the top left of the card here. The number here, in this case, a zero, is the grade number. Grades are similar to an evolution, just like in Pokemon. But unlike in Pokemon, you're not restricted to leveling up specific cards only. The process of leveling up cards is called a ride, or riding the card. There are four different grades in the game, which range from 0 all the way to 3. And just like in Pokemon, the higher the grade, the stronger the power, and the better the effects they gain. Just below the grade number here is a small symbol. Every card will have one of these symbols, though they vary depending on the grade number of the card. These symbols represent a card's inherent ability. Grade zeros and 1s have this symbol which shows their capacity to boost other units. Boosting is exactly what it sounds like, giving the card in front a boost by adding its own power to the card, bolstering the attack power. Grade 2s have this symbol, the ability to intercept. Intercepting is limited to just grade 2s, and is used to guard against an opponent's attack while the grade 2s on the field. This is quite important, considering most of the guarding you can do can only be done from the hand, so grade 2s have a dual utility. Finally, grade 3s have the ability to twin drive, as shown by this symbol. Twin driving is useful when drive checking, and this will be explained in a further video. Next, underneath, is the shield amount. The shield amount is used for guarding against your opponent's attacks, and multiple cards can be used at once. Keep in mind that grade 3s don't have the ability to guard, while grade 0s will normally have higher shield amounts compared to higher grade units. You can only guard by using units from your hand unless, as mentioned before, they have the ability to intercept from the field. Moving further down, we've got some flavor text. Don't worry too much about that. In the middle here, we've got the effect box, which is pretty much the same as any other trading card game out there, where if you can activate the effect and the conditions are met, you can use its ability. In Vanguard, monster effects are called skills. There are different types of skills, which are categorized into three main groups. First one is called Auto, where the skill can be activated when the condition written on the card has been met. So something like this card. His ability activates when you attack, while having another grade 3 on the field. So, the skill can be used once you declare the attack, and giving itself an additional 3000 power. The second ability is an activated ability. These effects can only be used during your main phase, if the condition is met, and you're able to pay the cost for the card. A lot of these costs are shown with these particular symbols. Most are relatively self-explanatory, with the symbols pictures showing exactly what should be done. 
With this symbol, the arrow is going away from the card, telling you to take the card out from underneath the card and putting it into the drop zone. This is called Soul Blasting. Similarly, this symbol here tells you to add cards from the top of your deck underneath the card. This is called Soul Charging. This symbol here relates to your damage telling you to flip a face-up damage over, face-down, to pay the cost for the effect. This here is called counter-blasting. Other rare costs, such as mega-blasting, use similar symbols and require multiple costs to be paid. Activated abilities can be used as many times as you like during the main phase, as long as you meet the requirements that are stated on the card. Finally, we have the last skill called Continuous. Continuous skills are exactly what they sound like, they're constantly active if their requirements are met. However, not all continuous skills have requirements, so some may even just have the continuous effect without doing anything in particular. Moving down even further on the card now, we have arguably the most important number on the card. This is the power, which in Yu-Gi-Oh terms would basically be both the attack and the defense of a card. Do not confuse this number with the shield amount above. If your opponent attacks this card, you can only take into account your power. The shield has nothing to do with your defense, and is only used to protect other cards. On the right side, we have the clan and the race of the card. The race doesn't particularly matter too much, aside from a few rare cases, but the clan is extremely important for building a deck. Most decks run only a single clan, because many effects are aligned on you having the same clan as the card that's activating an effect. You can run a hybrid deck, but having all units of the same clan makes the deck more consistent and easier to play. Don't worry too much about the number here in the middle. This is the critical number. Every single card in the game of Vanguard has the same number of 1. The critical number of a card shows how much damage it can deal to your opponent, so without any additional abilities, every card in the game can deal 1 damage as a minimum. Lastly, the bottom left of the card shows a set number and rarity of the card. Rarities range from common, shown by the letter C, to a regular rare, shown by the letter R. We then have a double rare, which has a foil pattern, a triple rare, which has a more prominent foil pattern, and finally an SP, which is normally an alternate foil pattern to an existing rare, double rare, or triple rare card and sometimes includes an alternate art as well. Now there is another type of card that looks different to the ones you've just seen, and can easily be identified by the yellow border on the bottom. These cards are called triggers, and have a different purpose in the deck. There are four different types of triggers, which can be identified and differentiated by the symbol on the top right. The first one, this yellow symbol, shows a critical trigger, which allows you to deal an extra damage to your opponent. The green one is a heal trigger, allowing you to heal one damage of yours. The blue trigger is a stand trigger, allowing you to shift your card to a vertical position if it's already horizontal. And finally, the brownish-orange symbol is a draw trigger, which simply allows you to draw an extra card. Triggers will also grant an additional 5000 power boost when activated, and is also shown on every trigger symbol that you've seen. Aside from that, triggers are just like any other card in your deck. They have a grade number, guard amount, and power, and can still be used on the field. I hope you guys enjoyed this little introduction to the world of Cardfight Vanguard. In the next episode, I'll be talking about deck building and its requirements, so stay tuned. Until then, bye.